Hey guys, Lily here. Today we're going to talk about the ancient Maya, and specifically, we're going to learn how to read one of their glyphs. Their most famous glyph, chocolate. Before we jump into that, we need to learn a little bit about the ancient Maya as a people. They were native Mexicans. In addition to Mexico, though, they lived around the Guatemala and Belize area, and that whole area is known as the Yucatan. So the Yucatan is a really neat area. It's very jungly, and uh, there aren't a lot of really flat areas. It's very hilly. So they had to really make do with what they had, and as a result, they were very creative, very artistic, and really architecturally uh, incredible people. They're known for making these giant temples in the middle of the jungles, which were lost to time for a very long time, for centuries, uh, until someone literally crashed their plane in that area and thought, huh, what was that I just saw as my plane was crashing? Hmm, that's so weird. Specifically though, their writing system is so incredible and so artistic that the people who actually did the writing, the scribes, actually were called artists. The word for scribe and the word for artist are actually the same word in the ancient Maya language, Tsaib. This is part of what made the ancient Maya language so difficult to decipher. In addition, people that were going after this language to try to decipher it were really coming at it from the wrong angle. They assumed that everything that was written in ancient Maya would be phonetic, the way that, for example, Spanish or English is phonetic. And it wasn't until the 50s, the 1950s, that's only like 60 years ago, that we finally figured out that we can't only look at this language as if it were phonetic, or as if it were pictographic. It's actually a little mixture of both. This makes it similar to Egyptian hieroglyphics, and actually, strangely, modern Japanese. <laughs> modern Japanese uses three separate alphabets, two of which are phonetic, and one is pictographic, but can also be used phonetically. Mm. Mm. The fact is, this is also what makes the language so beautiful. So let's give it a shot. Let's try to read one of the Maya glyphs. The one that we're gonna look at today is cacao. This is chocolate. This is a great glyph to learn from because there are only two parts. Some glyphs are really, really complicated, like this one for Copan. Copan was one of the major Maya cities. And as a result, it has this very complicated, very beautiful glyph that we are not going to read today because, oh my God. Instead, we're gonna look at this one. The only two parts. And the two parts are these, the fish, and what looks like its tail, but it's actually a little separate piece. Each piece represents a sound or a syllable. So the fish part is pronounced ka. The little additional part that looks like a tail is pronounced uwa. So when we put them together, it's ka uwa. But there's one more thing we need to remember, and that is those two little weird dots near the mouth of the fish. Why are those there? Anyone who reads music would be able to tell you that that's a repeat sign. It's the same meaning for the same symbol in music and ancient Maya. That's amazing. What does that mean? That means we repeat the symbol that it's next to, which is ka. So it becomes ka, ka, wa, and that's it. Except that when you speak ancient Maya, you drop the last vowel. So ka, ka, u, wa becomes ka, ka, u, ka, ka, u. Cacao. It's chocolate. Cacao. It's chocolate. <laughs> it's that simple. And now you can read a Maya glyph. So now, the next time you look at a bar of chocolate, and it says right on the label, 80% cacao, you'll know this is a word from the ancient Maya. <laughs> That's kind of awesome, right? If you'd like to learn more about the ancient Maya, their architecture, their history, their ancient super cool ball game that they played that freaked out the conquistadors so much that they actually banned it because they'd never seen a rubber ball before and they'd never seen anything bounce and so they thought it was possessed by the devil. If you want to learn more super cool stuff like that about the ancient Maya, let me know. Get in touch and I'll help you figure out how to write your name phonetically in Maya as well. Thanks for watching.